All right, let's look at one uh, one more example of using the Biot Savart law. Um, th this one's a little uh, a little bit simpler, just because there's some uh, enough things staying constant, or this is a little bit less intimidating way to start with the Biot Savart law. Um, so what we're supposed to do here is find the magnetic field that's created at the center of a um, of a circuit that's basically shaped like a circle, where currents just run around the uh, circle of radius a. And so what we're going to try to do is calculate the um, strength and direction of the field here in the middle. Um, and so our first move is going to be to put down the Biot Savart law. So just take a deep breath and put it down. Uh, mu naught over 4 pi i dl cross r vector all over r cubed. And again, my advice with, with using this is to uh, actually add in um, some detail in the picture to identify what the individual bits um, actually are. So for example, uh, DL, like let's pick a place to put a DL in here. So maybe we want to put one here. So here's a little chunk of the current um, that's going to be IDL. So here's your source, one of the little bitty sources of the field, and then the field's going to be generated here. There's your IDL. Your R vector is going to go from that IDL in toward the center, like this. So here's your R vector. Um, and then as you migrate around, so maybe I'll just draw it in one more place. Oh, why not here? So here's your um, IDL up here. And then the R vector that corresponds with that, again, is going to go from the cause to the effect. Um, so it's going to go this way. Um, there's your R vector when you're up here. So often, as is often the case with this, it's like you can deal with this uh, cross product often uh, pretty quick. So notice that DL and R are always perpendicular to each other. Um, so, so DL, for instance, points this way and R points this way. If you cross those vectors, DL folded into R is going to point out. Um, or you may have even known from the way your physics class has been taught that uh, you know, if you grab the wire with your thumb in the direction of the current, you can kind of see that the field um, is just going to come out everywhere in the center of this, um, of this uh, circle. Um, but you can also see it from the direction of, of DL cross R. Fold DL into R vector and it's out. Fold DL into R vector and it's out. So DL cross R just always points out. Um, so, so a couple things about this. So DL cross R vector First of all, they're perpendicular to each other. So the magnitude of this thing is just going to be dl times r. right? And then the direction is going to be out of the page. Or in the, you can call it the k hat or z hat direction. So k hat or out of page. Well, that just made life a lot simpler. Because what that means is no matter where we are on the circle, um, dl cross r is always just uh, DLR pointing out of the page. Well, so we can just stick that in there. So now what we've learned is that DB is always pointing basically in the Z direction. It's out of the page. Um, and we've gotten rid of the cross product. So we have mu naught over 4 pi I. The DL cross R just became DLR, right? Now, if you look at this, what is the value of R? Well, it's always A. So it's going to be DL times A all over and then in the denominator is the is r cubed but again that's just a this distance is fixed um, so that's a cubed plugging in a for r um, and so you can see that 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 a is going to cancel um, and you get an a squared down here so so now we're ready to integrate let's add all these up because all the contributions of the field always point out so we're ready to add up um, and so let's pull everything out of the integral um, that's a constant. So you get mu naught i over 4 pi a squared. Right? And then this is just the integral of dl. Now if you really think about what this means, right? dl is just a little chunk of the length. Well, if you add up the English meaning of this, sum up all the dls. That means sum up all the lengths. Well, the sum of all the lengths is just going to be the circumference of this thing, right? So, um, so let's do that. Mu naught i over four pi a. 
Um, and that's just going to be then the circumference. Um, whoops, that's a squared, t pi a, for the circumference. Um, looks like the pi's go away, and 2 and a 4 conspire to make a 2 downstairs. So you'll get mu naught i all over 2a. That's the strength of the field, and then the direction is out of the page. So that's the value, that's the value of the B vector. Okay. This last little move here, um, again, it's just more powerful if you know what's happening here. This is just the sum of all the bits of length. So of course it has to be the um, circumference. Um, I guess sometimes people when they're new to this, what they'll do is they'll say like, oh, that little bit of length here uh, it would be like A D theta. And then they'll integrate, you know, uh, so they'll say, okay, the integral of dl, that's really the integral from 0 to 2 pi of a d theta, um, which is a times the integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta. Well, so that's just going to integrate to um, theta evaluated at 2 pi minus 0, so 2 pi a. So you just get the circumference. Um, right? More powerful if you just know what this means, what the meaning of this thing is, then you don't have to do all that, that extra work. Moral of the story with this thing, you set up the, you write down the Beyond Savart law and identify the parts. What's nice is when you find out that certain things are constant and then you can pull them out of the integral. So look for things that are, that are constant. This problem was much easier than the problem of finding the field, say, above a long straight wire, because then the distance between the current and the point in question is always changing. Um, here it's a constant. Um, so we're able to pull those sort of thing, that sort of thing out. Um, so hopefully that helps. Good luck.